Bringing up all North Texas in high definition. Thanks for watching Good Day on Fox 4. Well, it was a terrible night of violence in the St. Louis suburb of Ferguson, Missouri, as protesters, I mean, completely ignored peace, uh, please to really try to keep the peace there. Here is a live look right now. Many businesses in Ferguson, some neighboring towns were burned, cars set on fire. In fact, cars in one dealership along a uh, busy road set on fire. Police say they did not fire any shots, but they counted more than 150 gunshots coming from the crowds. Officers finally did use tear gas to try to break things up. Hundreds of people waited for a grand jury's decision outside the Ferguson police headquarters last night. Within minutes after word came down that Officer Darren Wilson would not face charges, peaceful protests turned violent. Two St. Louis County police cars were set on fire. The grand jury that reviewed the police shooting of Michael Brown looked at more than 1,000 pages of documents. Twelve members listened to hours of testimony from witnesses including Officer Darren Wilson. Wilson said he was attacked by Michael Brown, who grabbed his gun. Wilson says he fired in the struggle not to lose the weapon to a very aggressive 18-year-old. Dallas lawyer Pete Schulte, a former police officer, he is on the phone with reaction. We just talked to uh, Dee Dee McGuire from K104 Radio, who's talking with folks in the African-American community, and she said it would never be justified, if I can paraphrase, to shoot 10 or 12 times. Never. Well, I, you know, the, every situation is going to be different, Tim, and I'll tell you that as long as the threat is continuing, that's what's going to happen. I mean, I, I don't think you can, you know, put a number of, of many shots. I mean, police officers are trained to eliminate the threat. And by looking at the evidence that I looked at last night after the prosecutor, you know, released everything after the statement last night, I mean, Michael Brown kept coming. And I, I don't think the threat was eliminated until – yeah, at the conclusion of, of the shots, and, you know, that, that is how officers are trained. They're not trained to, we well, are only going to shoot your weapon six times. It's to eliminate the threat. Yeah, he, in fact, told the grand jury when they asked how many times did you fire, he said he didn't know, and that kind of fog of war thing is fairly common. That is very common in officer-involved shootings is because, and I've been in situations as a police officer where, you know, what just happened, I mean, you react to your training, and when you come out of it, you, you know, you realize, wow, you know, I was in the fight for my life, and this is what, this is what happened. And I'll tell you, you know, in this particular situation, this happens a lot where, you know, if I'm a police officer on patrol and I pull somebody over for speeding, I have no idea if they just bought drugs or they just committed a robbery, but they always think that we know, that the police know. That's why they're getting pulled over. I think that's what exactly happened in this case is Michael Brown, I think, believed that Darren Wilson knew what he did. And that's why this thing turned violent so quickly. And it took Officer Wilson off guard a little bit. I mean, it was in the middle of the afternoon. Right. And it was, hey, kid, get back up on the sidewalk. You're walking down the middle of the street. And that turned into this very tragic situation. Um, right. The, 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 again, the officer just doesn't know from the get-go what he's facing. And then he has to react very quickly. He said in the struggle for that gun, he was afraid he was going to be shot. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. I mean, if, was he in fear for his life? And and I'll be, let me be clear with everybody. I mean, the laws that protect police officers about self-defense are the exact same laws that protect ordinary citizens. So there's no special treatment for law enforcement. If this had been an ordinary citizen, they would have been evaluated the same way, what we call grand jury referrals. So there's no special treatment here as they look at the facts. They say, do the facts line up with what the law says about what is self-defense? Pete Schulte, thanks. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely.